Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I'm gonna to give you a couple tips on how to keep your models light and performing. So we've done videos like this multiple times. We, we do them, I, actually they're pretty probably pretty regular. Um, one of the things that SketchUp will let you do is it will let you make a model that is difficult to work with. It will let you download furniture and, and import big imagery and, and put a bunch of stuff in your model that makes it so it in theory looks nice, but is so difficult to use. The file size is so huge that it has a hard time working. So I wanted to touch on two or three things that you can do to keep your model performant. And if you do these things, you shouldn't have problems with you know, a model that won't rotate or takes several minutes to open or anything like that. So let's take a look at it. All right, so I have a model here. And if I try to rotate, I don't know if you guys are seeing that, but it's it's choppy. It's jumping as I, as I, as I spin around. It's not so big. If you get your model too big and you start animating, components turn into black boxes and that kind of stuff. And it, it gets kind of kind of yucky. But uh, this has some stuff going on. It, this file is bigger than it should be. And it's not the geometry. If I, if I zoom in here and look at like the geometry on these, these uh, doors of this container, they're, they're not crazy detailed, right? This is a, a decent level of detail for this kind of model. Um, I have some round stuff. So, I mean, I do have some extra faces here, and, but it's not crazy. It's not out of control. The sides of this are super, look at that, super slim, super tight. Um, not a ton of geometry. This is not a ridiculous model. I mean, some models, you know, if, I, if I'm using like circles with a hundred sides or something ridiculous like that, then uh, I could see why this would be choppy. But as it stands, there's just a handful of things that are, that are causing this to be big. And I, I'm, I'm illustrating the, the little bit of drag as I orbit, but there's other issues that come along too, right? Is, uh, Newer versions of SketchUp do have more compact files than they used to, but it is still possible to get a file that is like big, like too big, hard to, hard to transfer around. Um, we're not quite there with this, but, but the, it's possible. We're, we can see that from here. Um, and I just want to touch on a handful of things that might help keep your file size down. So first thing, I mean, one thing I do want to mention on this isn't this isn't about file size or or making your model more, uh, you know, easier to open that kind of thing. But as far as orbiting, this right here profiles is one of the things that kills kills models quickly. Profiles. What profiles does is it just says, okay, lines that are in the middle are going to be thin, and then lines around the outside edge will be slightly thicker. It's even hard to tell on here that that's on because it's only the edge lines are only twice as wide as the, the, the field edges. Um, but what happens is every time I orbit, SketchUp has to go check again and goes, okay, which line is on the edge now? Which line is on the edge now? Which line is on? So it's constantly checking your model to see which line should be drawn with a profile two as opposed to default profile one. Turning off profiles, you can see, you can see the difference, right? See those, those hard lines, the darker lines? Um, Personally, I mean, I'll be totally honest with you guys, I like the look of SketchUp, but I like modeling without profiles. I think it ends up looking cleaner and lighter. Uh, so I generally do most of my work without profiles. So that's one tip. That's one thing. Turn profiles off, especially if you have a big model. The other thing, and I'm going to zoom in here and show you what I'm talking about. So I got some plants in here. Some of you already know where I'm going. But if I show hidden, so I'm going to get a bunch of extra lines. And that, again, is going to cause a slowdown to my animation. Because again, SketchUp draws what's on the screen. So you can see that also the further out you pull, the more it slows down. As you zoom in, you may hit this like barrier where all of a sudden, boom, you zoom fast. But having extra edges on versus off, SketchUp's gonna be more performant when your hidden stuff is hidden than when you show all those edges. All right, speaking of these good looking plants, they're 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 nice. They're they're I don't wanna I don't wanna complain about it but they contain a ton of geometry. Okay, this plant right here contains more geometry than the whole rest of the model. So this is not a simple fix. 
there is not a, a button in SketchUp that says, make this one thing more performant. What you will want to do is when you are importing Entourage into your model, use three warehouse. That's what it's there for. It's awesome. It is a great place to go get resources, but pay attention to what you're downloading. In 3D Warehouse, you have the ability to view and even, you know, I could actually go in. So if I look at this right here, I pick on it. It's going to tell me there are a quarter million polygons in this. If these are just little pieces that are accent pieces, there's no reason to put a quarter million extra polygons into your model. This isn't huge either. There are models up here that have two, three times this geometry. If it's a hero piece, if you're doing a render of this model, this makes a lot of sense. But as a little piece, it's adding some color, probably not the right thing to have there. So when you're in 3D Warehouse, you do have the ability here to say, well, I don't want a big heavy thing. In fact, I wanna keep it down to like, yeah, 2000. What do, what do I got for a hanging plant with 2000 faces? Oh, look at this, hanging spider plant. 274. <laughs> one 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 thousandth of the, the geometry so that's out there that's an option that is one of the two biggest things that happens in models where people are like oh my model's so huge or it's not performing there's two things i look for that is that is probably number one big ugly geometrically intense models downloaded from warehouse and that's not to say these are bad models these are great models but again, depending on what, so if this is, I'm trying to render something like this and I can barely see these things. Is it worth having like a majority of the geometry in my entire model dedicated to these things? Yeah, probably not. Another thing that ends up being a big issue is materials. So as you put in materials, so if I import materials, so I imported, you know, leaves for this, which came in with the model from 3D Warehouse, I may have created custom colors for this, you know, this, this specific green or this orange, or maybe I pulled in grass, fire that came in. Um, as I pull in materials, you do want to be conscious of the file you pull in or of, of the, of the size of the, the images you pull in. So what do I mean by that? Well, each of these, everything that, everything that's not white on here has either a color or a material associated with it. If it's, has a material associated with it, that file, so if it's a, a, a JPEG you pulled in, like this fire is a perfect example. So I pulled in a picture of a fire and I put it in this fireplace. Th that picture, that image of the fire is saved as the JPEG file into my model. So as you put in more and more materials, more and more images are being imported, they are being added to your model. It's not a bad thing, it's, it's good. I mean, SketchUp lets you create some really good looking models that way. But you do have to be conscious of how big they are. So we are talking level up SketchUp, but I'm gonna talk about one extension real quick, and that is an extension called Material Resizer. Material Resizer is an extension that is available from SketchUp. So we actually, our team, our extensibility team created this. And what it will do is it'll run through your whole model and it will tell you how big each material that's been imported is. So as I look at this, we have a bunch of materials that are, it makes sense. They're a little, you know, picture of foliage, whatever, no big deal. Um, but up here, I have some that are really big. So here's a, here's a picture of a leaf. It is a picture of a single leaf and it is 2300 by 3400 pixels. Not the end of the world. This is not, this is not a ridiculous uh, amount, but is a lot for maybe that big of a leaf. You could probably drop, again, depends on what you're using it for. If I'm rendering this leaf, okay, that makes sense. Green right here, this is a swatch of this green color and it's 8,000 by 8,000 pixels. That, I'm gonna go ahead and call that ridiculous. That is totally unnecessary. If I'm using a color, I shouldn't be importing it to begin with. But the fact that I have this and it's that big, it's taking up that much memory or that much space in my file, that's terrible. This extension right here, Material Resizer, will let you take any files that you think are too big, say, how big do you want them? And I can just hit go. And then what it will do is it'll run through the model 
and it will resize each of the selected images so that it is less than that material. So what that did was that ended up saving space in your model. All right, one last thing I want to mention. And we mention this a lot, but everybody always gets, or we always find somebody who watches these videos or sees these comments in the forum and gets excited. That is purging. So if you go to window and you click model info, uh, and then click on the statistics tab over here, it's going to tell you everything that's in this model, right? So here's, here's all the stuff that's in here. Edges, faces, components, guides, everything. Now, the thing about SketchUp is it holds on to things you pull in the model, even if they're not part of the modeling window. So if I come over here, I'm going to close styles and pull up components um, and look at what's in this model. Let's, let's do this too. Let's, let's get some thumbnails. Let's close this. Let's make this bigger. So it's going to show me all the things that are in here. So if I look at this, I look at this model right here. Um, I've got Sumele in here, but I don't actually see her in the model. Uh, I've got Heather, I've got some other, some indoor ficus. I don't know what that is. Here's my model of these, these three components and then I have some other pieces. So I have multiple pieces here. If I looked at my colors there, remember, remember I was looking at my, my color window before? Uh, so if I pull my paint bucket back up, um, I have a lot of materials here. I don't actually know if every one of these is being used. And SketchUp saves them even if they're not in the actual model. So if you add a color here, it's going to stay here. This, this mauve color, I might actually be using it anywhere, but it's saved as part of the model. Same with these components. This indoor ficus, I downloaded it and didn't like it. It's still saved in the model. So what Purge does, if I go into Model Info, Statistics, I have this button called Purge Unused. If I click that, it's going to run through the model, what's on my screen, and it's going to say, okay, everything here is accounted for. Anything that's not here in the actual model itself, out. That doesn't mean stuff is turned off. If it's in the model and it's on a tag that's toggled off or it's hidden, something like that, it'll stay in the model. But if it's not, if it's not actively being used anywhere in the model, it'll go away. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. It's hard to, I mean, just keep an eye on it. Let's see what happens here. Um, oh, do you see that? Look, look what happened over here. I had four components go away. Let's bring our, our paint bucket. So remember that? That was overflowing off the edge. So a bunch of colors went away too. So Purge is huge. If you use 3D Warehouse a lot, you may have a model full of 3D, 3D Warehouse models that you're not actually using. And Purge can do things like cut in half or even down to like 25% of your file size by getting rid of all that extra content that's being saved in the model. So keeping these things in mind is going to help you create models that are snappy, easy to use, and you know don't take multiple minutes to open or save or anything like that. I don't know if you've ever run into this model. Some people are really, really vigilant modelers and they always, you know, keep track of everything, hit purge every time they save, that kind of thing. Um, if you're using the online version, it does it automatically for you. Um, but if you've ever run into a model where it tends to be those experimenting models, you know, I'm just, I'm playing with this idea, I'm trying a thing out. If you run into that situation, uh, you might want to run through what's in this video and just go back and see if maybe there's a thing or two there that could help save you some time, energy, space, pain, regret, all the negative things. Purge might just take care of most of it. But if you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you don't already, please subscribe and leave us a comment. Let us know if you've tripped up on this or uh, what you think of this. We're going to give it a shot. Like making these videos a lot? Even more of them than showing something you want to see. Thank you.